Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and this is my second video on fraction mechanics and delamination. In the first video, we talked about the necessity of looking at fraction mechanics parameters for delamination or crack propagation problems. As you can see here, the stress distribution near the tip of the crack results in a stress singularity, which means that it's impossible to rely on the results here. If we look at fraction mechanics parameters, the values we get are much more reasonable, and we can use them to determine whether a crack will grow or not in a particular model. In this video, we'll be looking at the three modes of crack growth, mode 1, 2, and 3, as well as the tests you need to do in order to, to measure and correlate the critical energy release rate for each of the crack modes. So let's start by taking a look at the three modes of fracture. Mode 1 looks like this. So this is mode 1 fracture. Mode 2 looks like this. Maybe I would exaggerate the deformation a little bit. And mode 3 fracture looks like this. It's important to realize that when a crack grows, could be due to any of, this, of these three modes, and it can be due to a combination of all three modes. So in order to be confident in the prediction of whether a crack will grow or not, we need to calculate and measure the en energy release rate or other fracture mechanics parameters necessary for a particular crack to grow. So first, we'll set up the model. The geometry is created using space claim, but you can do it in any CAD modeling tool. The key capability in space claim is the ability to control what we call shared topology. Shared topology is an area where we define the surfaces as being uh, conformally meshed or where, with the nodes being connected. The red region you see is a crack surface. What I did was I split this solid beam into two horizontal separate, separate beams along the horizontal axis. And I made a second slice in the vertical axis. Using shared topology, I did not share this one interface. This allows me to define a crack that's zero thickness, which is very convenient for setting up these models. Once we've set up this model, once we set up the geometry, we can then perform a fraction mechanics analysis. I'll set one up from scratch to show you the process necessary to set up a 3D fraction mechanics problem in S workbench. So here's our geometry, and we have a contact region where the crack will occur. You can see the blue and red line. The contact is automatically detected, but for the first model, we don't need a contact, so I will suppress this for now. I'm going to set up, set up the model. and investigate the first mode fracture first. So for a first mode fracture, let's go back to my video here. The crack grows due to this type of loading. Typically, to, in order to measure the energy release rate, for, the critical energy release rate for a crack to grow during first mode fracture, you can do a double cantilever test. In a double cantilever test, we keep one side of the beam stationary and we pull on the other side. This causes the crack to grow. If you monitor the force versus deflection curve, you notice that the force will increase, and then at the critical energy release rate, uh, once it's reached, the crack will grow, and the amount of force necessary to extend the crack drops. In order to characterize the, the and calculate the critical energy release rate, we need to model that experiment. So define so so model the same size of beam with the right crack length predefined then apply the critical force necessary to, to cause this fraction to grow from experiment. The calculated energy release rate will then be your critical energy release rate. So let's see how we set that up in reality. I have a model here. Setting up the support and load is fairly straightforward. Uh, I will put a fixed support in on the bottom and I will assign put in a force. So let's say, just for the sake of argument, it takes a thousand newtons for our crack to grow given this length. So the crack I modeled here 
is a 5 millimeter crack. Obviously, you want to tune this to, your, to be the same as that of an experiment. Once we have this data, we can go ahead and run a simple simulation. We're going to turn on a large reflection. But this will just provide the standard static structural analysis. What we want to do is actually perform a fracture mechanics simulation. So I'm going to turn on fracture and select the pre-mesh crack. Uh, the pre-mesh crack allows, requires us to define the crack front, which will be this edge. So we're going to insert uh, a name selection. And we're going to convert that name selection to nodal name selection. This creates a set of nodes once we mesh it. So this nodal selection selected five nodes in total. We can assign this to our crack front. Now, next, we have to specify a coordinate system that defines the direction of the crack. So we can go to a coordinate system, we'll create a new coordinate system. This coordinate system will be based on its interior surface. And we want to make sure that the y-axis is pointing is normal to the direction of the crack and x axis is pointing uh, into the crack itself. So what we want to do here is specify that the y axis of this coordinate system is aligned to the global z axis. Now if we switch our coordinate system to the, the new coordinate system you can see that the, the crack front is oriented in the right direction and my crack normal is uh, normal to the surface of the crack. Now we can take a look at my fracture mechanics parameters. Uh, the last thing we need to be aware of is that for things like energy release rates, we need to use a linear method. Uh, we need to specify linear elements instead of quadratic elements. So we have a c stress intensification factor, and we can look at my energy release rate in mode 1, 2, and 3. So this is my energy release rate for mode 1 due to this particular set of loading and crack geometry. This is mode 2 crack and mode 3. You can see that mode 1 is significantly larger than mode 2 and 3. Our current setup is a good, in good indicator for first mode, the critical energy release rate for first mode crack growth. Next, we want to calculate the critical energy release rate for a mode 2 crack. A quick review here, a mode 2 crack looks something like this. This can be difficult to test or set up in experimentally. So what the common method is, is that we set up something called the end-notch fixture result, uh, test. There are many other tests that you can do. In an in-notch fixture test, we need to assign, uh, apply load right in the center. So the, there will be a beam with a predefined crack. We'll support the two ends of it and apply load in the center. So in space claim, we can easily create, split the surface uh, such that we have on a 20.5 millimeter split. So that's my edge where I can assign the load now. Let's go back to our simulation. This one. this one here, and we'll update the geometry. Okay, so there's our applied load location. Uh, if we generate the mesh, it should rebuild all the fracture things we need. Okay, so let's set up the in-notch fixture test. On one end, we'll apply a fixed support. On the other end, we'll make it simply supported. And we will apply a load. Again, this, the load you apply here would, be, would come from the experiment. So you do a, first do a an experiment to test what the load you need is in order for the crack to, to grow. Monitoring the force deflection curve usually allows you to uh, 
uh, calculate when this crack grows. Uh, for the sake of for the sake of argument here, I'll apply a z-axis load of a thousand newtons again. We solve the simulation. So we'll take our fraction mechanics data and we'll drop it into the new solution branch and we'll also take a look at the deformation. You can see the way my crack is now breaking, similar to a mode 2 crack. If we look at the energy release rate, mode 2 is very high while mode three and one are very low. So this test and simulation together will allow us to de determine a reasonable approximation for the critical energy release rate needed for a crack to grow in mode two. Mode three is pretty challenging. Now in a mode three crack, it's very challenging to set up an experiment. This is just a idealized version of a crack where I apply a support on one side and the displacement on the other face and I'm splitting it. You can see that uh, both mode 2 has an energy release rate of about a thousand while mode 3 has an energy release rate of about 400 so they're pretty close together and mode 1 is a little bit less. It's, ch it's difficult to set up a purely mode 3 uh, fracture problem. Uh, there are certain techniques available but it's uh, it can be very challenging depending on the type of the material uh, you're dealing with. And also mode one, mode two seems to be the dominant crack in, uh, that's experienced in most uh, industries I deal with. So mode one and mode two are the ones we'll focus on. So once you have your critical energy release rate for mode one, two, and maybe three, uh, the other thing you have to worry about is that sometimes all three modes occur in conjunction during a particular type of loading. So it's sometimes useful to do additional testing to understand the mode mixity. What is the ratio of mode 1 and 2 uh, energy release rate necessary to, for a crack to grow? That would require some additional testing, whether it's midpoint bending, three-point bending, or other types of tests that you can do. In essence, we have a wide range of tools that will, uh, once you have that data, ANSYS has a wide range of tools that allow you to model the growth of a crack due to, due to a combined load scenarios, and we'll cover that in the next video. Thank you, have a good day.